Most people think of the flu as spreading person to person, but it also spreads block to block, city to city, region to region. That's an important consideration in the field when we predict where it's going to head next. My name is Jeff Shaman, and I track the flu, which is not as easy as you'd think. But I've always been interested in disease and how environment affects disease spread. The subject of climate or the environment in human health is very, very old. When I first started doing this, I quickly got a sense of how hard flu forecasting is and why it's important that we do it well. Deadly flu outbreak could be the worst in nearly a decade. And at least 60 children have died. The flu, which is now considered an epidemic. And health experts are still warning that the worst may be yet to come. I realized we could forecast the flu much like we forecast the weather. To track the flu, we combine historical data and real-time collections of data into a mathematical model, which we then use to predict how likely an area is to get the flu and how much flu it will have. This is similar to what they do for a weather forecast. Your weatherman tells you there's an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. Then you know to bring an umbrella to work. Instead of atmospheric conditions, for the flu, we track influenza activity and use that to develop a forecast. But unlike the weather, there isn't enough quantitative data available to track the flu effectively. So we have to get creative. To figure out who has the flu and where, we can use hospital and medical records, sales of cold and flu medicine, or even social media. This person sounds sick, and we can see that they're tweeting from Manhattan. Actually, there's several tweets from people located in Manhattan feeling sick. We can also estimate flu levels using specific Google searches, such as medicine for a cough, or I have body aches, or why does the flu hate me? Okay, maybe not too many of that last one. So we have a model, a mathematical model, which uses all these data to estimate the prevalence of flu in the Manhattan region. And in fact, using similar models, we know that the worst of the flu season is over for California, but that in some cities like Boston and Providence, it's still peaking. You'd be surprised how many other people are working on this. There are probably about 20 different groups tracking the flu from year to year. Each group may use different techniques or models to forecast the flu. Some models may predict that it's going to be a very bad flu season. Others may say it's going to be a very mild flu season. The different predictions create an ensemble of forecasts, or many possible ways that the flu season might progress. There's even a competition to see which group's model predicted the actual flu events most accurately. Think about why it matters. Hospitals need to know how bad the flu season is going to be so they can staff the right number of nurses and doctors. Companies and schools need to figure out how many people will be out sick. Pharmacies and drug stores need to know when and how much medicine to stock up on. And government public health agencies need to know when to start educating the public on flu prevention. It's not enough to study the virology and immunology of influenza. We also need to figure out ways to forecast who's going to be infected next. 